I read a lot of comments in the uh, YouTube uh, by Japanese people written in Japanese because I, I can read and speak a bit of Japanese. I studied it. So it helped me with uh, also the singing on the ja of the Japanese part of Ultraman. But also I could see the comments uh, about the victory theme. And uh, a lot of people uh, said that it brought back a lot of memory and gave them hope uh, about life and uh, you know uh, we felt a few years ago uh, that Ultraman could save the day <laughs> so it was a good timing to uh, to record that kind of uh, of song and project it was really fun to do Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Chewy from Voivod how are you doing I'm pretty good yourself. I'm great. I've interviewed so many black metal bands this year that nobody wants to be called by their real name. So anybody with a nickname just gets called their nickname. I'm Keefy. That's what my, you know, my name is Keith. All my people, my, you know, my childhood nickname was Keefy and social media handles are now Keefy. And now I'm like a uh, Keefy Ramon, Ghost Cult Keefy. Keefy's so, good. George, you know, Dan, Dan, Danielle Chewy. Great to see you here. Uh, congratulations. I very rarely get to talk to artists on the day of their release normally it's you know a while before yeah and so this is i know this is the end of your press run of of interviews for this ep but ultraman congratulations what a fun project especially since we had the full length earlier in the year this is a real this is such a treat as a, as just not just a journalist but a fan i love this little record thanks uh, it, it was really fun to do and uh it it wasn't meant to to, uh, to be on the album but uh, i fooled around before writing songs for the album together i fooled around with it and i suggested to, to the guys i have the dvd not so far away <laughs> and uh, i um, i uh, tried to do an arrangement because there's a lot of instrument in their original version uh, from uh, 1966 and uh, the composer is great and the arrangement are great but uh, there's a lot of trumpets and you know woodwinds and uh, and stuff like that. So I tried to uh, reduce it to guitar and bass and keep some elements and notes. And it was kind of a, a good challenge uh, to, um, to, to, to reduce it for two instruments. Uh, and uh, we did a medley with the middle song, which is the victory or the battle theme, so to speak. And uh, I read a lot of comments in uh, YouTube uh, by Japanese people written in Japanese because I, I can read and speak a bit of Japanese. I studied it. So it helped me with uh, also the singing on the ja of the Japanese part of Ultraman. But also I could see the comments uh, about the victory theme. And uh, a lot of people uh, said that it brought back a lot of memory and gave them hope uh, about life. And, uh, you know, uh, we felt a few years ago uh, that Ultraman could save the day. <laughs> so it was a good timing to uh, to record that kind of, uh, of song and project. It was really fun to do. If only we had Ultraman for real at the beginning of the pandemic, we might have exactly. fixed this thing before it got <laughs> too crazy. Uh, I, first of all, you I have been a fan of Ultraman for a very long time. And I think it's a really just a strange coincidence is this week was all, as we speak today, this interview will probably run sometime in the future, of course, but this week was also the anniversary of Godzilla, the original Toho Godzilla wow. movies. I didn't know so that. just, uh, you know, just kind of the confluence of Japanese pop culture, uh, nerd and geek stuff, things that, you know, sort of like an underground taste for this kind of stuff, kaiju and and battle things and and such and great Japanese programming, theater, film, movies, you know we we are great borrowers of their wonderful culture and and great exchangers of culture as yeah. well. They've been huge metal fans. They, I know Voivod this very well. Beloved beloved band in Japan, of course. Yeah. So this is a really fun. I think it was really fun. Uh, funny that you mentioned your vocals. So yeah, that was, it was a real treat to hear you not only <laughs> sing, but sing in another language. Yeah. Well. Uh, I'm, I'm not a good judge of Japanese, but <laughs> I, I'm sure you did a competent and great job. I you sound a, great. A friend that uh, told me uh, 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 give, give uh, his approval uh, for, the, for the pronunciation and all that. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> I nice. was in good hands. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, um, you know, in terms of, you know, there's a few different takes and there's the live, the live track, of course, again. So like, yeah, those, 
these things are, are great. It was a um, like a real great memory from my childhood, Ultraman. So it's, it's, we used to have Ultraman in the States. On yeah. uh, There was like a block of programming on Saturdays. We would have kind of like horror movies, um, sometimes karate movies, and then like campy mm. Godzilla, Ultraman. You know, sometimes it would be like a, you know, not, I think it was a little before Speed Racer, but like the generation right before Speed Racer, mm -hmm. things like we that, uh, G Force. Um, yeah, Battle yeah. of the Planets, things like that. So, like that kind of programming. Whoever was doing the programming in the New York City area in the eighties, mm. thank you. Yeah, exactly for, for saving my childhood and helping yeah. my childhood. And yeah, and we had the school. we had the the series here, but it was translated to French because we speak French in, in here. So that's why we recorded the French uh, verse and the English verse and the Japanese for uh, being tribute to the original as well and. Uh, so that's why there's three versions because in Japanese there's three different verses, but in in French and English there's only one. It's only the first one. So there's a, a a version with three different languages, and there's a full Japanese version, and there's a instrumental version, which is really interesting. So you can uh, pay attention to to more details, and you can you can sing the song over it <laughs> like a karaoke thing, you know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's perfect, and uh, we need more. We need more instrumental versions of albums anyway. Some bands have done it. I would like, I think it would be very interesting to see Voivod take a, a stab at it. Um, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. Not that I don't love the, the vocals and the lyrics because those are important to me also. But yeah, I think uh, it would be a lot of fun uh, on a, on a project, maybe something in the future. But yeah, man, what a great little, you know, what a, what a fun for the end of the year. This is a real treat, I think for fans and, uh, has been a very, a really excellent year for the band, obviously with yeah. uh, synchro anarchy coming out earlier in the year and just, you know, the, uh, it, it seems like, you know, you can count on Voivod every three to four years to put a strong album out and you guys have done stuff in between, yeah. uh, you know, EPs and things, and projects and uh, Michelle had his book and art project, which yeah. you know, we, we just went nuts for. And, and we did a few online shows as well uh, during the, the era. We just, uh, <laughs> the, the <laughs> I don't want to name it, you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so it was fun to uh, visit, uh, revisit some albums like Nothing Face and Dimension Hate Product and play, play it live. I wish we can tour it, you know, like the whole, uh, both album, I don't, we, going on tour and play Dimension Atrus and Nothing Face, uh, that would be a fun fun thing to do. I, I will be in the front row if that happens. I <laughs> promise you. Uh, we were saying offline, I had been a longtime fan of the band, traveled many times to see the band, yeah. seen, you know, countless shows. And, uh, you know, I just feel very fortunate. This is seems to be like a really great time for metal where we yeah. have the legendary bands are still not only just playing and touring, but able to make new music that matters. Mm -hmm. And also we have all these young, exciting bands. So this is a very strange, I did not forecast this. I couldn't tell you that this was going to happen. Uh, other genres you see, you know, we're, we've lost some people, right? Obviously along the way. And um, I tell people like, go see your heroes because they're not going to be mm. around forever. That's and, true. And, and, you know, of course we lost Piggy, you know, mm. very, still very tragic to me, very sad to me. And I like that the record also honors him with the chant, the fan, you know, like, the band does a really great job of carrying his memory. And I know he was very important to you also, yeah, with, you know, besides the fact that you came into the band, but before that you had, you Oh know, yeah. Yeah. Very important to you. Yeah. Big influence on my uh, view about music and curiosity about complexity and dissonance and the way uh, of composing and all that and create a new world with, you know, creating something that doesn't exist before. Like boy, Ben's like, before Voivod, I mean, when they started out and they developed their own language, uh, three, four, five first albums, you know, it, it evolved so fast and they were putting out an album every year and they were touring and writing but at the same time and going to the studio between tours and crazy schedule. But but the, 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 the world and vocabulary and universe of Voivod is, has been so unique from the, from the start. Uh, uh, we we owe a lot to Piggy, of course, and uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, to have the the privilege to carry the torch for sure. Honored. Yeah, and you've done a wonderful job, and I think you know, thank the you. Fan, the fans have let you know you are very much loved and appreciated. Also, and yeah, this you know the last record was fantastic. This little 
detour was really pleasant, you know, a pleasant surprise. I, I really didn't have any, I was like, when I saw the title, I was like, no, it can't be. And of course it can. And so, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful that this will be part of the set list when you guys return to touring and festivals uh, for 2023. You would love to hear this live, uh, you know, here in North America and elsewhere. We're, you know, we're all over the world. So wherever you guys go, we'll be there. But, uh, you know, I know, I'm sure there's not too much you can reveal about what's coming up for 2023, but hopefully it is going to be a busy year. Yeah, we we really wish to uh, to tour the U.S. again, the West Coast, especially because we didn't go uh, on the last uh, leg. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of touring because we didn't uh, we couldn't tour when the album came out right away. So it was delayed until the summer, uh, June, and then we did a, sh a small a short run in, in Europe. But then we we go in, in a few days. We're going to Europe with Opeth. And uh, we're going to headline some shows as well. So we are like three weeks with Opeth and then we do, do another two or three weeks uh, by ourselves. It's very exciting to uh, go uh, uh, there again and uh, meet some old friends and uh, familiar faces and new faces and, uh, and uh, travel again, playing music uh, everywhere. Uh, I think it's a very um, important thing, thing in a, in a musician life. And uh, we're very lucky that... Uh, there's a few Vodfoy fans everywhere on the planet that show up to the show and enjoy, you know. Right on. And uh, what a great pairing that is, Opeth and Voivod. Uh, I know Michael will have, I'm sure, some jokes. And he always does. He's, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. he's like, those some of the best sense of humor ever. And, uh, you know, we always look forward to, you know, Opeth live. There's no show like quite like an Opeth show. They have such a tremendous... And they're going to play a very long set list yeah I heard uh, that, lots yeah. of lots of surprise and they're a very big fan of voivod since the beginning since uh so uh, it's very uh it's great you know it's uh, we feel very welcome uh to play on that tour and uh it's going to be only good times for sure yeah right on i'm sure there's going to be like a lot of guitar fans and guitar nerds in the audience because you're talking about you know some of the best guitar music ever made for I mean, <laughs> any genre but rock and metal and uh you know it's going to be very exciting uh we're, yeah. we're we'll probably cover the tour at some point I, I was looking up the itinerary earlier getting ready to chat with you so yeah. yeah i wish you luck the road you know is it's a tough time right now for touring coming back yeah. we're still kind of coming back i know everybody's very fatigued talking about the last few years and when will it will it ever be back to where it was will it ever be over i don't know you know we wish you safety out there and uh Thank success you. and and you know you know watch your tour buses and you yeah. know save on gas when you can and um yeah that, it's hard this, the first the first line in synchro anarchy is a uh, lost wheel for, uh, from nowhere uh, and uh, it happened to us and that's why it's in the lyrics you know uh, we we uh, we changed bus five times in the last tour we did with tour we had the bus problems but uh, we're still alive uh it's a it's a dangerous uh job sometimes to be a touring musician but yeah hopefully uh, everything will be fine right in the in the run-up just uh just to mention in the run-up to this tour in a few you know just in a short while how much do you increase how do you play you know practice the set list and prepare yourself does the band rehearse to go on tour or at this point are you so it's so old hat to you that you don't have to we have to take care uh, to uh, to a lot of, uh, a lot of things uh, from uh, the food that I <laughs> I have to manage my fridge when I go on tour so it doesn't you know rot <laughs> and I come back and I have to take care of uh, worms everywhere <laughs> in my apartment but you know a lot of details like that you have to take care of but of course we uh, <laughs> that's just a, another subject but we we get together and we jam the songs some some new songs we never played before and some songs from synchro anarchy that we only played in the studio uh, recording it so it was kind of a challenge and uh, we changed the set list uh, some of the songs in the set list to refresh it and we're going to play like a few set different set lists on the Alpeth tour and we're going to play a longer set list with uh, more songs uh, on our headline shows so um Changing the set list with Opeth will kind of keep us, uh, how can I say it in English? 
uh, we refresh the songs that we don't play the night before, we play them the night after, and then for the, the long set list it are all the songs that we play in both set lists. So we, it's kind of a rehearsal every day <laughs> when we play it live. But we want to rehearse to, to reach the point where we don't think about anything when we play, especially with the new uh, material. And uh, if, if it's been a few months, we didn't jam to the, together, some of the reflex are gone, you know, the, the digital memory and all that. So just going back to it once or twice, it, it, it helps. And it, it makes the sound tighter of, of the whole band. And so at, on the first show, we don't uh, look like amateurs. We, <laughs> we, it's like we have two, two or three shows done already, you know. Right. I appreciate the uh, the will to want to shift the, sh the set list from show to show and even from the different legs of the tour. I just saw the uh, King Crimson documentary, which I can't recommend enough. I love Robert Fripp. Yeah. But also he said something that really I probably mentioned this in at least one other interview uh, that has nothing to do with my review or the movie. But uh, he said in the film, if he takes one day off from playing, he feels like he gets worse. He's been playing for like 57 years and he's been, you know, King Crimson has been a band for, you know, 55 years. Yeah. And he is still like hungry. Like when he was a teenager to get better, to keep it to first of all, to not get worse, to not yeah. lose his edge, I guess. Mm. And that just boggles my mind because he's Robert Fripp. He's one of the greats ever. <laughs> but that's why. But that's why. Like, that's and that's why. how he is. I, I may. It's possible if you see the film. I highly recommend it. I it will. May, I will check it, it out. It may be why the band is not very enjoyable for anyone else because <laughs> he's like that, and you have yeah. to have a certain personality to be able to follow his. Oh lead. yeah. But the the film's wonderful. I love King Crimson. I'm sure you do too. Yeah. And, and Fripp is a genius. But it's also like to me. Yeah. I can. I. I there are definitely days when I'm. I need a day off from whatever my craft mm. is writing. I need to take a day off and do yeah. something else, go yeah. for a walk, get out of the house, cook all day. And then exactly. the next day I come back to write and I feel better. But if he did yeah. that, he would feel terrible. So yeah. it's very interesting to me. If it works for him, you know, uh, at some point you, you find your, your own way of doing things. And there, uh, there's a, also the fact that uh, there's a lot of complex part in, in King Crimson and also, and I, I don't, I don't know, but, <laughs> I presume that with age, you know, you have to keep your hands in shape and, uh, you know, uh, to, if you stop, it, it, it shows, I'm sure, more than when you're 20, 25 years old. <laughs> so uh, I, I get it. And uh, that's why maybe Mick Jagger is practicing his dance move and is singing, even if he's not on tour, you know, because uh, when you stop, you rust, you know. Fair enough. Robert has been sitting in that chair the whole time. If you go watch the early videos of Kim, King Crimson playing live on those first few years, yeah. he's always been in the chair with yeah. his little effects on a table. He's never been a stand in front of the stage person like yeah. always contemporary. So just interesting to me. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Just just as we wind this down and I want to give you back your day again, I, I'm so thankful to get to talk to you. You know, uh, as we're approaching the end of the year, I was wondering if you had a uh, enjoyed any other albums this year that came out in 2022 that you've been listening to or oh if they God. haven't anything you have been listening to that you know you enjoy that you listen to when you're not making I, i've music. i've um i've uh we had the opportunity to play uh, together with melt banana and i've listened to this album uh, i don't know if it's 2022 but it's pretty recent i enjoyed it and i really enjoyed the show uh, their live show and um, last time I saw a band from Detroit, uh, Child Bite, I bought uh, their material and I, I'm friends with the band and uh, I really enjoyed the, their music as well. I've bought uh, as well uh, the last Pat Metheny album. I went to see him live in Montreal and I really enjoyed it. There was a jazz trio and the keyboard player were, uh, was playing all the bass part and um, it was fantastic. So and the, the album is a live album. It's called Side to Die or something like that. And uh, it's really enjoyable. It's live and it's like perfect. And it's, uh, they, they get in the zone, you know, improvising and uh, it's really enjoyable. Yeah, Pat is wonderful. I got to see him a long time ago. I should try to go see him again soon. He also does, he always does like a studio album and then a live album of the tour that follows. Yeah. That's kind of his whole career 
uh, of late I uh, followed. But yeah, that sounds awesome. It's always good to stretch out. I love Melt Banana Live. I don't know that I I I may not have heard that recent album, but whenever they go to play live, I go. Yeah, and I've I've got the the new uh, Revocation, which is very very good, uh, good sounding as well. Yeah, mm, such a good record. Yeah, we love we love those guys. And I'm a Child Bite fan too. We've interviewed them, and I love Sean. And oh, they're such great. a fun band live. They're so punk and hard, you know they're they're so good. I love. Yeah, them. They're fantastic. I think it's uh, one of the the originals out there. You know, like they're they're, they're very unique, and I like them live too. It's, they put out a, a great show. For yeah. sure, Chewy from Voivod, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with Ghost Cult today. I appreciate you. I know our fans appreciate you. They're your fans too. And uh, just thanks so much for being here. We look forward to catching you on the tour and all the best success to you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot, Keith.